Okay, so presumably you've done problem number 11 on your own, or tried it. Uh, so for number 11, I've got my work showing here. I'm not going to talk my way through the whole thing. I uh, did find that the least common denominator was x plus 3 and x minus 2, which I multiplied in this exceedingly sloppily written and small blue print on both sides. Uh, and when I multiplied this out, I can see, you can see that I ended up with this quadratic, this x squared plus 1x plus 5 equals 0, which unfortunately does not factor, which means the answers that we would get would be from the quadratic formula. They will be kind of gross. Uh, they're definitely not something that we're going to make you do on the test, uh, not without a calculator for sure. So at this point, that's good enough for now. All right, if you need to pause this video or see any parts of this, go ahead. We're going to jump ahead and go down to number 14 next. That's the last one I'm going to walk through on these straight algebra problems. And we're going to look at both sides of this, which here I have once again given you one that's been factored already. There isn't anything else to factor. Because the real challenge in number 14 is, can you find the least common denominator? So as we look at this, we have three fractions to look at. One with a 4 on the bottom, one with an x, and one with a 2x minus 3. Now they don't have anything in common. You know, there's nothing that has just a straight up 4 on either of these other two. So I totally need the 4 inside there. There's nothing that has just a straight x like the middle fraction does, so I totally need the x in there. And there's nothing that has just this straight factor. So on this one, we're going to need a least common denominator that is all three pieces all multiplied together. Uh, it would be similar to if I was trying to deal with, you know, like 1 half equals x over uh, 5. The easiest least common denominator to look at for those two would be 5 times 2. Uh, because they don't have any factors in common. So that's really what's happened here, except there were three fractions. All right, so now we're going to take our original fractions, and for each one of them, we're going to multiply by this nasty sort of least common multiple, or least common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this guy by 4 times x times 2x minus 3, all over 1. And multiply this by the exact same thing, all over 1, and this by the exact same thing, all over 1. And again, if we've done this right, something should cancel out, leaving no fractions. So here the 2x minus 3s are going to go away. On this one, the x is going to go away, the straight up x, the, the non-factor part. So this 4 is going to go away. And that's why we did this, is so that those factors would disappear. So on the left side, I've got a 4 times x times a negative 2 plus a 4 times the factor 2x minus 3. On the right side, I've got a negative 3 and the x, don't lose that, on the outside, and then a 2x minus 3 on the inside. I'm starting to feel like we might end up with another quadratic on this guy. So this becomes a negative 8x, this becomes a positive 8x minus 12, this becomes negative 6x squared plus 9x. Now we've got to start combining some like terms. So these guys are going to cancel. I'm left with a, uh, I'm going to move this 12 over to the other side. And I get 0 equals negative 6x squared plus 9x plus 12. It's another quadratic. So this time I'm, I still need to check this and see. I've got a common denominator, a common factor we can take out of all three. Does I think we can take out a negative 3. That would leave me with a 2x squared plus 3x plus, no, minus. That's not a plus 3x either. That's a minus 3x. Let's try that and a minus 4. All right, so I'm not sure if this is going to factor. Uh, I need to check this. So I'm going to take this guy over here, 
and put it into a sneaky square. So I've got a 2x squared and a negative 4. That means I need to multiply to negative 8x squared, but add to negative 3x. Let's see, what are ways that I could get a negative 8? 1x times a negative 8x. Or a negative 1x times a positive 8x. Or a 2x times a negative 4. I really don't know if this is going to work or not. I'm starting to think no. I think those are about the only ways that I can get to an 8, negative 8x squared. And none of those add up to 3. So once again, this is not factorable. It is really quite a challenge to find problems that will factor or will solve into nice problems. But the important part is that we did the algebra work to get to here, All right? Okay, so that's the last problem on this, uh, on the algebra part that I'm gonna do. Um, I want you to finish number 13 on your own. And uh, then on the last pages of this document, there are some more algebra practice problems that I want you to do on your own as well.